The Out of Africa story begins to look very different the moment you place the Toba super eruption at the centre of the plot and ask a simple question. Which humans did it actually wipe out? Once you stop treating Toba as a vague bottleneck and start looking at the geography of Denisovan ancestry, the continuity of East Asian sites, Y-chromosome geography, and the lopsided survival of Homo sapiens, the picture that emerges is almost the opposite of the classic out-of-Africa narrative. The volcano that is often vaguely invoked as a near extinction for modern humans looks, on closer inspection, like a catastrophe for Denisovans, while a set of sapiens populations in East and Southeast Asia survived, regrouped, and expanded into a continent suddenly emptied of its dominant archaic competitors. Out of Africa insists that a tiny group from equatorial Africa marched out around 70,000 years ago and populated the world. The evidence instead points to a species whose non-African heartland was already in place before Toba. Start with the basic geography of the disaster. Toba's ash plume and sulphate fallout did not strike the world evenly. The thickest ash blankets and most dramatic ecological shocks fell across India, the Bay of Bengal, much of mainland Southeast Asia, and adjacent parts of the Indonesian archipelago. That belt, stretching from the Indian subcontinent through Myanmar into island Southeast Asia, is exactly where every line of evidence places the main body of Denisovan populations. Their genetic fingerprint concentrates today in Papuans, Aboriginal Australians, Philippine Negritos, and some mainland Southeast Asians, which only makes sense if large Denisovan groups once occupied South and Southeast Asia and bled into the ancestors of these populations as those sapiens moved through their territories. Meanwhile, key refugial zones for Homo sapiens, Southern China, parts of East Asia, perhaps parts of Arabia and North Africa, lay outside the heaviest ashfall and retained more ecological stability than the smashed forests and savannas of India. Once you accept that the people standing in the direct blast zone were mostly Denisovans, with sapiens populations concentrated further north and east, the asymmetry of what followed becomes obvious. Denisovans were heavily invested in the very ecologies Toba damaged most. Large terrestrial game, forest and woodland settings, and the deep inland corridors of South and Southeast Asia. A super-eruption there is the equivalent of setting fire to the library where their entire evolutionary knowledge was shelved. Homo sapiens in East Asia, by contrast, had broader diets and a wider range of refugia. Coastal resources, riverine fisheries and more varied foraging strategies meant that the same climatic downturn and ashfall that devastated denser inland Denisovan populations hit smaller, more flexible sapiens bands less harshly. Denisovans lost their core. Sapiens lost some peripheral populations, but preserved reproducing cores safely buffered in China, the Western Pacific Rim, and perhaps in parts of Western Asia and North Africa. Genetics captures the aftermath of that asymmetry in stark terms. Denisovans are not some marginal footnote in our genome. They are a shattered mirror. Different Denisovan-like ancestry components exist in Papuans, in Philippine groups like the Aita, and in mainland Asians, implying at least three deeply diverged Denisovan lineages that once roamed Asia. Yet in the present, there is no surviving Denisovan Y-chromosome, no surviving Denisovan mitochondrial lineage, and no intact Denisovan population anywhere on Earth. What we see instead is the pattern of a species that was once widespread and diverse, then catastrophically reduced to a few pockets whose remnants were absorbed into expanding sapiens groups. That kind of genetic pattern does not emerge from a gentle phase out over hundreds of thousands of years. It looks like a crash. Now compare that to the Y-chromosome structure of modern humans outside Africa. If out of Africa were correct in its literal form, the main bottleneck should occur at the moment a small group leaves East Africa. The signature should look like a radiation of lineages rooted firmly in that region. Instead, the deepest surviving non-African Y lineages, C, D and F, do not point their center of gravity back to East Africa. Their ages and their current diversity suggest that they coalesced and radiated in Asia, particularly East and Southeast Asia, after the Toba interval. This is the conclusion of a study published in 2020, titled A Southeast Asian Origin for Present-Day Non-African Human Y Chromosomes. 
These are not some crackpot scientists or Chinese-backed propaganda. In fact, the authors are an international collaboration of top scientists from universities in Moscow, Estonia, and Cambridge. Haplogroup C follows the great coastal arc into Siberia, Eastern Asia, and ancient Australia. D survives in Tibet, Japan, and the Andaman Islands as relic fragments of an older distribution. F and its descendants explode across West Eurasia, South Asia, East Asia, and through their R and Q branches into the Americas. These look like a handful of post-bottleneck survivors expanding across an emptied continent, not the clean traces of a neat dispersal out of a single African cradle. The timing matters. The classical genetic bottleneck that out of Africa pins to a migration out of East Africa sits, when you look carefully, right in the window after Toba. The expansions of C, D, and F, the sudden spread of modern humans into Europe, Siberia, and Australia between roughly 60 and 45,000 years ago, and the patchy pattern of Denisovan introgression all line up with a Eurasia that has just lost its main archaic occupants. What out of Africa sells as a heroic exodus from Africa looks when reframed like a more complex story. A species already spread around Afro-Eurasia, whose eastern branches bore the brunt of recolonizing a continent hammered by volcanic winter and ecological collapse. The archaeological record in China and Southeast Asia reinforces that reframing. India and parts of Arabia show breaks in occupation and disruption of tool traditions in layers associated with or shortly after Toba. In contrast, southern and central China show continuity that refuses to obey the neat narrative of catastrophe followed by a march of African saviors. Teeth and jaws from sites like Fuyan and Jirindong, along with other material indicating modern or near-modern humans in East Asia well before 74,000 years ago, demonstrate that Sapiens was already established there long before any supposed 50 to 70,000-year-old out-of-Africa wave. After Toba, there is no evidence of a clean replacement in these Chinese sites. Continuity of occupation persists into the late Pleistocene, and when ancient DNA finally appears in the form of individuals like Tianyuan Man around 40,000 years ago, his genome looks unmistakably Eurasian, closer to Native Americans and East Asians than to any African group. This is where the Toba Denisovan collapse becomes fatal for the simple out of Africa model. If Eurasian diversity were merely a late offshoot of an African core, then early Eurasian fossils should sit genetically closer to Africans than to any later non-African groups. Instead, specimens like Tianyuan and other early modern Eurasians, Ust Ishim in Siberia, Bacho Kiro in Bulgaria, the Oase individual in Romania, cluster within a Eurasian space that is already distinct from Africans. They are not tentative, newly arrived Africans. They are representatives of a lineage that has been evolving in parallel for long enough to accumulate its own structure and its own history of admixture with Neanderthals and Denisovans. The classic model cannot easily explain how, within a few thousand years of a supposed exodus, these Eurasian individuals are already more closely related to the ancestors of Native Americans and East Asians than to Africans left behind. A model that assumes an older Eurasian presence a Denisovan collapse, and an East Central Asian refugium expanding into the vacuum can. The Denisovan side of the ledger delivers an equally damaging blow to out of Africa's simplicity. Under the classic narrative, archaic admixture is a minor garnish, a few percent of Neanderthal, and perhaps a token dollop of Denisovan blood. But we now know that Denisovan contributions to some populations, Papuan, Aboriginal Australian, Philippine, are large and genetically complex. Different Denisovan components suggest deep splits among Denisovan groups, some of which must have diverged from each other nearly as long ago as Neanderthals diverged from sapiens. This is not a marginal local hybridization event. It is the fossilized imprint of a long history in which Denisovans were major players across Asia, and in which modern humans arriving or expanding through their range repeatedly mated with and absorbed them. That huge, structurally rich Denisovan footprint is incredibly hard to reconcile with a world in which Sapiens only appears in Eurasia after 70,000 years ago and swiftly sweeps to dominance without serious competition. Toba gives you the missing act in this drama.
Before the eruption, Denisovans dominate much of South and Southeast Asia, with their genetic and cultural fingerprints stretching from the Himalayas to the edges of Wallacea. After Toba, their core ecologies are shattered, their numbers plummet, their range breaks into splinters, and they retreat into refugia. High-altitude settings like the Tibetan Plateau, cold northern caves like Denisova, and island redoubts in Wallacea and the Western Pacific. There, in their diminished state, they encounter sapiens populations expanding out of East and Southeast Asian refugia, and slightly later, perhaps out of some West Asian cores as well. These encounters are not symmetrical meetings of equal powers. They are collisions between a growing species and a collapsing one. The result is the genetic pattern we now see. Denisovan ancestry preserved only in the genomes of those sapiens who happened to traverse the last surviving Denisovan territories and nowhere else. From this perspective, the post-Toba expansion of sapiens is not out of Africa in any meaningful sense. It is out of refugia, out of China, out of Southeast Asia, perhaps out of a few other pockets as well, into an Asia whose archaic backbone has been broken. Africa is still part of the story, of course. There were deep, archaic lineages there, and some of them survive in the Y-chromosome tree as AOO and so on, but the crucial shift that made our species globally dominant played out in the East. It was the collapse of Denisovan strongholds, not a single neat migration from East Africa, that opened the paths to Australia, Siberia, and eventually the Americas. This is why the Toba Denisovan collapse is so devastating for the classic Out of Africa slogan. The older model depends on a clean demographic picture, a single small founding population, a single bottleneck centered on an African exodus, and a world in which archaic humans are side characters. Once you take Toba seriously as a selective, regionally focused mass extinction event, the whole architecture falls apart. The bottleneck is no longer a generic human event. It is a Denisovan disaster that sapiens rode out from safer ground. The genetic simplification in Eurasian Y-DNA is not the signature of a heroic band of African emigrants, but of a few successful male lineages emerging from refugia in Asia and possibly adjacent regions. The archaics cease to be a background noise and become the main actors whose collapse gave us the stage. In 2026, Out of Africa has expanded to also include what anthropologists quietly call extra-African origins, which refers to South Asia. But they don't say that part out loud because out of Africa has become such a cultural phenomenon that you just cannot replace the term. So when you hear anthropologists say out of Africa, what they really mean is out of Africa and South Asia. None of this means Africa is irrelevant or that human origins reduce to a caricature of out of China instead. What it does mean is that the old politically convenient story of a uniquely African cradle, of a single exodus, of a simple tree with Africa at the root and the rest of the world as twigs, is no longer sustainable. The real story is braided, metapopulational and myth-shattering. It includes deep African ghosts like AOO. It includes long-lived Eurasian lineages like Denisovans and Neanderthals. It includes refugia on multiple continents that took turns sending waves into one another's territories. Toba is the hinge where one such wave began, not Africans rolling outward in a single tidy expansion, but surviving sapiens populations in East and Southeast Asia pouring into a Denisovan world that had just been burned to the ground. When you see it that way, the classic out-of-Africa model is not just incomplete. It is upside down at precisely the moment when the most important turnover in Eurasian prehistory occurred. The extinction that mattered was not ours, it was theirs. And our expansion, in the wake of their catastrophe, is written not as a clean line outward from Africa, but as a complex, looping surge out of the refugia that Toba left standing. Thanks for watching.